This video is going to be the start of a series where I cover my preparation for the CPTS exam all the way up until I hopefully pass it. In this video I'm going to talk about what I've done so far to prepare for the exam, and future videos will be progress reports and things I learned while I continue to prepare for the exam. If you're watching this then you're probably already interested in taking the CPTS, or you're interested in penetration testing in some way, so hopefully this video inspires you to start or continue working on the modules for the CPTS, or whatever penetration testing learning you're doing, and hopefully you learn some things from my journey. If you are someone who's interested in penetration testing or hacking, but doesn't know what the CPTS is, it's a certification from Hack the Box that requires you to do a learning path of 28 modules and pass the CPTS exam, which is a 10-day network penetration test that requires you to gather 12 out of 14 possible flags across an Active Directory environment and multiple different standalone boxes. The exam also requires you to produce a commercial grade report at the end of those 10 days. And this begs the question, why take the CPTS in the first place? And although the CPTS is not yet as industry recognizable as the OSCP, CPTS is claimed to be as difficult, if not more difficult than the OSCP by those who have taken both, and it's also much cheaper to take. So my philosophy is if I can pass the CPTS exam, then I should be in a good position to pass the OSCP after a little bit more study. For a little background info on my industry experience before going into the exam, I have a BS in cybersecurity, and I've been working in IT and cybersecurity roles for the past four years. I have no professional penetration testing experience at the time of recording this video, and before starting any of the CPTS modules, I was learning on TryHackMe in around May of 2023, and was religiously learning about penetration testing by doing what they call now their cybersecurity learning roadmap. After about six months of doing TryHackMe daily, I decided to move to Hack the Box, and started off by doing their fundamental and intro modules. Once I thought I knew all of the prerequisites for Hack the Box, I then started my CPTS module journey around January of 2024, and took my sweet time to do all of the modules in the CPTS path, except for the final Attacking Enterprise Networks module. My first time going through the material, I took very bad notes, and I took them on Google Docs. So a few months ago, I decided to redo all of the modules and retake my notes in OneNote from scratch. The second time through the modules took a whole lot less time, and it was actually quite a confidence boost, realizing how much I picked up the first time through, and how much I had actually learned since starting in early 2024. But this mistake that I made leads into my first tip of the series for anyone starting the CPTS path or doing the modules, which is to take clear and easy to reference notes with example commands and tool usage. Separate your notes into different stages of a penetration test in a way that makes sense to you. I closely followed Bruno Rocamora's CPTS tips and tricks, there's a link to his page in the description, and separated my notes into four main categories, which are information gathering, pre-exploitation, exploitation, and post-exploitation. Within each of these categories, I have subcategories that will have different techniques and ways to use tools. For example, under information gathering, I have different subcategories for the different types of enumeration to be performed against a target, starting with asset discovery and then going into service enumeration, web enumeration, application enumeration, and lastly, AD enumeration. Within each of these subcategories, I have techniques to gather this type of information during a penetration test or CTF. If we dive into service enumeration, we see I have a different page for common ports that may be discovered during a scan, and how we can enumerate those ports, potentially find vulnerabilities that may lead to a foothold on a machine. Having your notes in a structure that is easy to reference may save you a lot of time during an engagement when you get stuck on something that you swear you've seen before and you just don't know where you documented it. If you're someone like me who can take very wordy notes that may take a long time for you to find what you're looking for in a wall of text, you can ask an AI chatbot like ChatGPT to make your notes easier to digest. A prompt that I used to tidy up my notes was this one. I have made notes to help me in my penetration testing studies, specifically for the Hack the Box CPTS exam and CTS. Can you help me clean up my notes and make them more digestible? These notes are on blank. And then after that, I would paste in the notes that I had in my OneNote, and ChatGPT would spit out a summarized, very clear uh, version of those notes that was easy to reference and reduce a lot of the clutter. Remember that if you're going to use ChatGPT or another AI chatbot to summarize or clean up your notes, that you correct any potential errors in the output, and that you do not use any real or sensitive data in your submissions to ChatGPT. Now, a lot of you watching this video are not going to have completed all of the CPTS modules yet. Depending on your current skill level and your pace and how dedicated you are, this could take anywhere from three months to a year to complete. I think the first time around it took me six months to finish it from start to end, excluding the documentation and reporting module and the AEN module. So if you haven't completed all the modules yet, or you're just starting out, I'd recommend doing the modules in the order that they are presented in the penetration tester path and taking those clear, concise notes as you go. Something I wish I did at the beginning, since I lack hands-on experience, is to do a couple of the recommended boxes after you've completed a module that should somewhat relate to the topics covered in that module. A list of those boxes is presented once you complete a module at the very end. Take your time to really understand the material from each module. If you don't understand something mentioned in a module, it may require you to do some digging and research to understand the fundamentals of the topic before you can fully understand what is being taught. So Google will be your friend. 
As badly as you may want to go through a module to check it off as complete and move on, it is crucial that you have a solid understanding of what was covered. Hack the Box has made it clear that all tasks on the final exam can be solved through what is taught in the modules. You don't need any other external knowledge or extra information. Once you've completed all of the modules except for the Attacking Enterprise Networks or AEN module, and have taken clear notes on each one, you are now in my position where you may lack the hands-on experience and don't have a solid methodology. When I say methodology, I mean a set of instructions and guidelines that tell you what to try during a certain phase of the penetration test. For example, to start, you should have an enumeration methodology that if followed will enable you to discover all of the IP addresses, host names, ports, services, etc. on a network so that nothing gets left unchecked. Then once you start enumerating a box, you may have a Linux or Windows enumeration methodology that acts like a checklist for you to check all of the potential vulnerabilities that may exist on a box depending on its operating system. Basically, for every single common scenario you may find yourself in, you want to have an easy to follow methodology that you can follow blindly that will get you to the next step of the assessment. I'm currently in the phase of creating these methodologies and editing them or adding to them so that once it's exam time, I'll have an easy to follow instructions for many different scenarios that I may run into that may potentially lead to foothold discoveries or owning the box. I plan on improving my methodologies by doing the boxes in IPSEC's unofficial CPTS prep YouTube playlist and adding to my different methodologies as I practice these boxes. I will attempt to do each box in his playlist on my own with no hints, and then if I need help, gradually get hints until I've completed the box. And after completing the box, I will then watch IPSEC's video on the relevant box I just attempted and see how my methodology differs from IPSEC's, which may lead to some new techniques that I can add to my own methodology notes. Episode 2 and onward for this series for the foreseeable future will probably be me attempting those CPTS prep boxes and updating my notes, as well as going over how what I did differed from IPSEC and what I took away from it. I'll also be attempting the AEN module blind, pretending that it is the actual exam and timing how long it takes me to complete. I've heard from multiple people who have completed the CPTS to treat the AEN module like an actual exam because it's the closest thing to the exam on Hack the Box. Not using any walkthroughs or hints, Writing a report and attempting to complete the module in less than 10 days should be a good indicator of how ready you are for the actual exam. So this will be my final test before signing up for the actual test. And remember that all of the lessons and modules in the Penetration Tester job role path are a prerequisite to taking the CPTS exam, and they're also very informative and teach you all the things you may need to know to be a junior penetration tester. If you didn't plan on taking the CPTS exam, I would still highly recommend the Penetration Tester job role path on Hack the Box if you're looking to get into penetration testing or improve at CTFs. And like I mentioned earlier, the entire exam scope is completely covered in that job role path. No outside information is required, supposedly. So if you're someone who's looking to get into penetration testing or wants to learn hacking, I hope this video series encourages you to sign up for Hack the Box or another similar site and start learning and practicing your skills. If you're someone who's looking to start or is currently working towards taking the CPTS exam, I hope you learned a thing or two in this video and continue to follow along with the series as we work towards this goal together. If you're someone who has already passed the CPTS or OSCP, and somehow stumbled upon this video, I encourage you to leave any advice in the comments for myself and any other viewers on a similar path as mine. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.